Never trust that the Sierras will be safe. Always prepare for the worst. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most dangerous tourist destinations. I'm pretty sure you shot me on a look. No, I just have. They're not full. Listen, I saw. Look, mate, I checked twice, all right? For this list, we'll be looking at surprisingly dangerous locations that tourists typically flock to year in and year out. Have you been to any of these places? How was it? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Mont Blanc. <laughs> Meaning White Mountain, Mont Blanc lies between France and Italy and is the highest mountain in the Alps. Rising over 15,000 feet, it's a popular destination for all sorts of winter and mountain-based activities, including skiing, climbing, and hiking. Here you descend over this exposed ridge down onto the glacier. But the beauty of the mountain and the surrounding area is deceiving, as Mont Blanc is incredibly dangerous. It's been estimated that between 10 and 20 people die on the mountain every year. Yeah, I slid all the way down this crazy ice chute. This makes Mont Blanc the deadliest mountain in the world, even deadlier than the big hitters like K2 and Everest. Everyone thinks they can handle a pretty mountain, but reality can often prove otherwise. A lot of people don't understand that this is the high, high mountains. They think it's the amusement park. You know, you could get altitude sick or you could get a lot more tired than you would anywhere else. And Number 19, Yellowstone National Park. Spanning over 3,000 square miles in the western United States, Yellowstone is widely touted as the first national park in the world. What you have directly behind us is boiling hot water. It looks beautiful, it looks inviting, and yet the boardwalks are here for a reason. Established back in 1872, Yellowstone has been a popular tourist destination for well over a century. There's a bear on my car! Oh my gosh! The area is well known for its geothermal activity and spouting geysers, but these have resulted in over 20 deaths and countless other injuries. Some serious, some unreported. Colin Scott's decision to leave the boardwalk was one of a string of fatal errors. He actually walked 225 yards on fragile ground like this in flip-flops before he slipped and fell into a hot spring. But it's not just the geysers that people have to look out for. Tourists die every single year by drowning in pools and falling off of cliffs. It's a gorgeous park, but one whose inherent danger needs to be respected. Number 18, Colorado River. One of the great rivers of the world, the Colorado River spans nearly 1,500 miles. And despite its name, the river actually travels through multiple states, including Arizona and California. A search tonight for four people who have been missing for nearly 24 hours after a pair of boats collided on the Colorado River. It offers multiple recreational activities, but it's known far and wide for its whitewater rapids. Unfortunately, people underestimate just how dangerous these rapids can be. Hundreds of people have been injured or killed on the river, with rafting inexperience playing a large role in the incidents. The current was so strong, it was moving me around, and all I could think about is get air. Whitewater rafting sounds like fun, but it's no joke, and many people have learned that the hard way. Number 17, Madidi National Park. Found in Bolivia, Madidi National Park is a massive and biologically diverse region. Because it spans from the Andes Mountains to the Tuichi River, Madidi contains everything from snowy glaciers to tropical rainforests. Like any park, Madidi has its dangers. It's home to nearly 300 species of wild animals, not to mention 120,000 species of insects. It's also easy for tourists to get lost in the vast region of the Bolivian Amazon, so tour guides are an absolute must. The fierce weather is another obstacle to overcome. In 2015, for instance, a young tourist named Louise Shepard was caught in a violent storm and crushed by a falling tree. All parks have their dangers, especially one as large and diverse as Medidi. Number 16, New Smyrna Beach. Often ranked as one of the best surf towns in the world, Florida's New Smyrna Beach is home to about 30,000 people. It's obviously a hot spot for surfing, but it also hosts a slew of other water activities like diving and fishing. Bye-bye, fishy! Unfortunately, it's also earned the unofficial distinction of being the shark attack capital of the world. A lot of people will not come here because of that. There were 24 reported shark bites in 2008 alone, and on September 18th, 2016, three separate surfers were bitten in the span of just a few hours. 
Florida led the world in shark attacks in 2019, with nine of the state's 21 incidents taking place in the area of New Smyrna Beach. Just in that narrow band, we are seeing literally tens of thousands of sharks. It's practically like Jaws out there, and surfers would do well to take heed. Number 15, Snake Island. A place like Snake Island gets its name for a reason. I believe the pirates had the snakes there for protecting their treasure. Officially titled Ilha de Queimada Grande, Snake Island is found off the southeastern coast of Brazil. It's quite a fascinating place as it's filled with highly venomous golden lancehead vipers. So you can see by their camouflage how they look just like a pile of dead leaves. Rising sea levels have trapped the snakes on the island, and it's now their only home in the world. Access to the island is mostly prohibited, but it still welcomes members of the Brazilian Navy and academics studying biodiversity. These visitors are forced to take extreme safety measures as golden lanceheads are highly venomous. Estimates place the snake population at one per square meter, meaning there's a deadly snake within a few feet in any direction. No thanks. With these snakes, it will be a particularly painful death. You're going to die screaming. Number 14, Mount Washington. Found in the northeastern United States, Mount Washington is a popular tourist destination for hiking and skiing. The mountain is well known for its horrific weather, with the Mount Washington Observatory bearing the slogan, home of the world's worst weather. The worst part about the mountain's weather is the wind. So we're gonna take a look at what it's like outside. It's pretty crazy. For over 60 years, Mount Washington held the world wind speed record when winds of 231 miles per hour were captured at its summit. Structures at the top of the mountain are literally chained to the ground to prevent them from being destroyed. The highest winds I've ever experienced while working here is 158 miles per hour. The winds were from the northwest that night and I was outside de-icing the instrumentation and when I came back in, uh, the building was actually shaking. Numerous people have died while hiking and six have perished in avalanches. In fact, it's estimated that over 160 people have died on the mountain since 1849. Number 13, Lake Natron. Known for its distinct red color, Tanzania's Lake Natron is physically wondrous. The beauty is aided by the presence of wild flamingos, as Natron is the only breeding ground in East Africa for lesser flamingos. Camping is a popular activity in the area, and many climb the nearby volcano. But they would do well to stay clear of the water. It is the most caustic body of water in the world, with a pH level greater than 12. Mmm, salty. This water is incredibly dangerous, and a lack of competing animals and predators allows the flamingos to thrive. The water can reach temperatures of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and at times has the alkalinity of ammonia. Does that mean no swimming? Bummer. Have a ball, baby. I'm not swimming in that. Number 12, Sumatra. The sixth largest island in the world at over 180,000 square miles, Sumatra is part of Indonesia's Sunda Islands. We're flying to my mom's resort in Sumatra. She's closed down the whole place just for us. As of 2020, it is home to nearly 60 million people. Despite its vast numbers of inhabitants, Sumatra is not to be underestimated. The island is home to active volcanoes and contains many treacherous rivers, forests, and swamps. Dangerous animals like rhinoceroses and tigers can also be found on the island. It's also highly prone to natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis. In 2004, Sumatra was battered by the Indian Ocean tsunami, resulting in approximately 170,000 lost lives. Visitors would do well to prepare. Number 11, running of the bulls. Surprise, surprise, running in front of charging bulls is not a great idea. If you fall, don't ever try to stand straight up the bull. Every year between July 6th and 14th, the Spanish city of Pamplona hosts the San Fermin Festival, of which the running of the bulls is the main attraction. The run goes from the corral to the bull ring, 825 meters through thin cobbled streets with little or no escape. The event obviously brings many dangers, including exhaustion, pile-ups, and of course, being gored by a running bull. It's not only 24 hours of fun for nine days, but there's an element of danger. It's estimated that between 50 and 100 people are injured in the bull run each year, and 15 have died since 1910, including tourists from Mexico and the United States. All but one of those deaths was the result of goring. The exception was a Spanish teenager who suffocated in a pile-up in 1977. 
Number 10, Rio de Janeiro. There's a general idea in this country that everything is allowed because there are no ethics. World famous for its beaches, landmarks, and world-class hotels, Rio receives approximately 3 million tourists every year, making it South America's most popular destination. But the sheer number of people makes visiting Rio a risk as criminals abound in the popular tourist districts. Carjackings and muggings are common, and pickpockets take advantage of crowded beaches and carnivals. This happened. Rio is also known for express kidnapping, which is when a criminal holds someone ransom and demands they withdraw money from an ATM. Street violence is also frequent, with police in the state killing an estimated 1,800 people in 2019 alone, an average of five deaths per day. We have no peace. I have just picked up my granddaughter from school, but in the morning she grabbed me saying she didn't want to die. Nobody can stand it anymore. Number nine, Death Valley. Maybe it's best to just stay clear of a place called Death Valley. Recalculating, recalculating. We just kept saying, you know, go this distance and take a turn, make a U-turn. Found on the California-Nevada border in the northern Mojave Desert, Death Valley is a dry, barren, and horrifically hot location. You and I are jogging, training for the Death Valley Iron Man. No big deal, we do it every year. There are many notable attractions within Death Valley that have made it a popular tourist destination, including Dante's View, Darwin Falls, and the Badwater Basin. However, the area gets brutally hot in the summer, with average highs of around 115 degrees Fahrenheit in July and August. Not surprisingly, this unforgiving climate wreaks havoc on unprepared hikers and tourists. Three and a half million acres, almost a thousand miles of backcountry roads. Our search area is daunting. People die every single year inside Death Valley, and the area saw six fatalities in 2021. If you're asking to go home, but if you're not saying, lead me to the closest paved road, just the shortest route, that GPS could lead you, you know, through 100 miles of dirt road. Number eight, Cliffs of Maher. Found on the western coast of Ireland are the Cliffs of Maher. They rise between roughly 400 and 700 feet above the Atlantic Ocean, and the gorgeous views have made the cliffs one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country. It's also the most dangerous. It goes without saying that cliffs rising 700 feet above the water are dangerous, and one small misstep can spell disaster. The cliffs saw 66 deaths between 1993 and 2017, and roughly one-third of the deceased were tourists. The dangers are especially prevalent today as some people have died taking selfies near the cliff's edge. Number seven, Half Dome. Found at the eastern end of Yosemite Valley is Half Dome, a massive granite dome rising over 4,700 feet above the valley floor. A storm comes in, you don't go for it because the higher you get exposed, the more you'll get lightning strike. Half Dome gets its name from its distinct appearance as the rock looks like a smooth dome that has been sheared in half. It's a popular destination for climbing and hiking, and about 50,000 people climb the rock every year. Extremely steep, and you're holding on so tight. But accidents are common, including falls and even unfortunate lightning strikes. Between 2005 and 2019, 13 people died attempting to summit Half Dome, and hundreds more were injured or incapacitated to the point of needing rescue. The reason there's cables there in the first place is because it is too steep for uh, most people to climb. Number six, Devil's Pool. Seriously, what is with these ominous names and why do tourists flock to them? Devil? Everything is the devil to you, mama! Devil's Pool is located at the top of Zambia and Zimbabwe's Victoria Falls, and it's essentially a little pocket where swimmers can rest and look over the edge. Swimmers are stopped only by a slimy little rock lip, and it allows them to gaze down the over 300-foot-high waterfall while water rushes around them. Okay, I'm gonna pass. I'm not really in the mood. The danger goes without saying. Devil's Pool is only available from August to January, as the country's dry season reduces the water level and exposes the rock lip. If someone was to try this any other time of year, in the words of Zambia's tourism website, quote, they would be instantly swept to their deaths. Number five. Tijuana. Found on the border of California and Mexico, Tijuana is Mexico's second largest city and part of the Southern California megalopolis. In a day you have about 110 to 150.
50 cars. Because of its close proximity to the border, Tijuana gets scores of American tourists who come across for a fun weekend. As long as you don't get into dark alleys or you don't deal with drugs, your chances of being victim of this type of violence are not over the average. The city's draws include a thriving nightlife, low drinking age, and even a legal red light district. Unfortunately, these tourists are often taken advantage of, and some have even been robbed by the local police. But there's something even worse, and that's Tijuana's high mortality rate. He and his friend Juan Suarez Ojeda were heading to Mexico Friday to a friend's barbecue. The plan was to get home by the end of the night, but he never returned. There are roughly 138 homicides per 100,000 people, statistically making Tijuana the deadliest city in the world. We have a 24-hour period with about eight killings. Number four, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. Life is not back to normal around Chernobyl. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged. In fact, it probably won't be habitable in the near future or the distant future either. It's pretty much a lost cause at this point. 12345 explosion. But that's not to say you can't visit it. Dozens of tour companies allow access into the Chernobyl exclusion zone, and staying there for a short amount of time is relatively safe. As my wife and I were watching the series, Oh great, now it's going to be a popular tourist destination before we get a chance to go there. Hopefully it's not too crowded. Or... However, radioactive isotopes continue to linger in the area, so staying for too long can result in harmful doses of radiation. Tourists are also advised against touching things, as certain objects may prove dangerously radioactive. Still, you can't beat it if you're a fan of ghost towns. When I see, when I see all this debris and destruction here, for me, it's kind of symbolic, too, of, of the Soviet era. Number three, Mount Everest. The granddaddy of all mountains, Everest has an undeniable legacy. This legacy has made it a popular tourist destination, even though it stretches nearly 30,000 feet into the sky. When I summited Mount Everest, I did it in my daddy's private blimp. Everest is surprisingly popular, with Nepal granting hundreds of climbing permits each year. But as books like Into Thin Air argue, most people simply aren't ready to tackle the rigors of Everest, no matter how experienced they may think themselves. Over 300 people have died climbing the mountain, and their frozen bodies remain half buried in the snow. This particular member said that they were so close to, uh, to death that they were, it was not worth risking someone else's life. As if climbing the darn thing wasn't scary enough. Most of the fatalities are attributed to avalanches and falls, but things like exposure, altitude sickness, cardiac arrest, and strokes are also significant risk factors. We were thrashing around trying to generate some heat. You know, you'd, you'd punch on each other and uh, do anything that tried to keep the other person stimulated and awake because you didn't want to slide away into unconsciousness. Number two, North Korea. How do you feel about Kim Jong-un? He is the most beloved leader of our people, and all Koreans love him so much. Arguably the worst country on earth in terms of human rights, North Korea doesn't exactly spell beautiful weekend day. Everybody learns how to shoot a machine gun and to throw a granite. But despite its secrecy, North Korea does indeed welcome tourists. With some caveats, of course. Tourism is strictly controlled by the North Korean government, and all tourists are forced to undertake guided tours. People see only what they're allowed to see, and veering from the group is strictly prohibited. As a foreigner, there's absolutely no way you can use your mobile phone. The biggest cautionary tale in that regard is the story of Otto Warmbier. Please, I've made the worst mistake of my life. Warmbier was a young college student who allegedly tried stealing a propaganda poster and was subsequently sentenced to 15 years hard labor. It's a brutal regime. He returned to the United States completely brain dead and passed away shortly after. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon is an amazing place to visit, but don't wander in without a guide. For one thing, the area is mind-bogglingly large, with the entire basin covering nearly three million square miles. There are bats here that they land on you at night and 
you can't even feel them. Their teeth are so sharp and their saliva numbs you so that they can suck your blood. And While visitors without guides are trying not to get lost in the dense expanse, they're being accosted by a wide variety of dangerous animals, including cougars, piranhas, and venomous snakes. The biggest threat may come from mosquitoes carrying dengue, malaria, and yellow fever. Not very far from my hut was a jaguar. I watched him for a while, he watched me, I yelled. For the inexperienced, the Amazon rainforest is a melting pot of danger and death. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.